If you're in the market for a new electric car and you don't want to go for something like the Tesla, then this could be an option for you. This is the BYD Seal and it's a sports saloon and right off the bat, it looks fantastic. I mean, it's low to the ground. We've got this uh, low bonnet on the front. We've got BYD logo on there and for around, I think it starts from £45,000, just over. I think you're getting a lot of car for your money. You get 19-inch wheel a standard on there. You also get heat pump a standard, high level of heat pump as well. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about. Let's start with the design. I'm liking the front of the car. Like I said already, I love the, the way that it's low to the ground. Looks fantastic. But that also adds to its drag coefficient. I'm talking about 0 0.219 uh, drag coefficient. So this is actually quite efficient. We'll talk about the range uh, where we get on the road and what this is capable of. You got the DRL on the front there, which is low to the ground here, and it's, it, they said it resembles the waves in the sea when, I mean, it's BYD, it's all to do with water and stuff like that. You got this slim profile uh, LED headlights on the front, and it just looks really good and sharp on the front. You might get a silhouette of the Ionic or maybe Ford Monday, wherever you want to say, but as a Chinese brand, when you come into this part of the world, this western part of the world, you need to have a car that's familiar and doesn't look too shocking to the audience or the intended audience. This is a sports saloon and it's really fast as well. We even took it on the track, which is behind the cameraman uh, here, which looks, you know, had a good experience there. But back to the design, let's talk about the side of the car. On the side, like I was saying, you get a standard 19-inch alloys. I love the two-tone color uh, going on the wheels, looks really good. And then we move here, we've got the uh, BYD design, little badge there. And then what you need to notice here is we have NFC on here, so you can use a card to get in and out of the car. And then this here, this pop-out door handles also sits flush once you start driving, which adds to that drag coefficient uh, numbers. We move further back, we get this uh, nice line. It's a beautiful silhou silhouette. I think it's uh, 2.9 meters of wheelbase in terms of length. So this is actually quite long as well. And it slopes to the back here, which looks really good. One thing I love as well, so we look below here, it's got this nice, F1-esque sort of vibe going on there. I kind of like it, it's not bad at all. And then moving on to the back, we have the uh, lights on here as well, which is LED light bar that goes all across the back here, which lights up, looks absolutely fantastic on the back when you see one of these. And I love, I love this diffuser on here, it makes it look nice and sporty. We've got BYD seal. So this comes in, uh, it's gonna come in to the UK in two trim levels. So you have the real, rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive version. And on the, on the whole wheel, all wheel drive version, we get this 3.8 seconds our number on here, that's a zero, point, zero to 62 figures of what you can do in this. We open the boot, so you can see how big the boot is as well. We have 400 liters of boot space in here, so it's got quite small opening entrance uh, to the boot, but you still be able to fit your luggage in there easily. And then there's another compartment down here where you can put your charging cables and stuff like that. There's also a 53 liters uh, front on the front, which means if you don't want to put your charging cables there, you can put that on the front or store a hat maybe who knows whatever you want to put there uh, you can do that and then we come over to the right side and the reason why we're doing that separately is because this is where the charging point is and this supports um, your 11 kilowatts on board charging but also if you find yourself with a fast charge so 150 kilowatts fast charge you'll be able to charge this up very quickly using that port on the side over in the back seat i think the general consensus or the feeling here is it's very spacious i love this panoramic roof which goes all the way from the front all the way to the back. It gives a sense of spaciousness in there, which is really good. I love the material that's used in here as well. I love the way it's stitched uh, together. The pattern looks really nice. You've got BYD logo on the headrest. We do get to armrest here as well, which is really nice with two cup holders. Uh, but what's more important is you can actually sit in the middle here because there's no transmission tunnel. So if you have another adult who wants to sit in the middle, they can comfortably sit here for a long period of time with no problems at all. We get a full USB-A port here and one USB-C port so that brings it in line with new devices which is good there's another area here which you can store your phone there's no climate control on the back here for the passenger so it's nice and just simple it's just you sit here enjoy the journey which is really good and uh, yeah headroom is really good as well I love the way that I can sit comfortably well in terms of my knee height as well it's not too raised it's not too low which is really good compared to the Model Y for example or even the Model 3 which doesn't feel as comfortable when sitting at the back so yeah, I think all around here is very premium and it's comfortable as well, so bravo. Up front, again, the story continues. It's very premium in here, so this material that's used in here feels very Alcantara kind of vibe. Looks really good. I love the pattern on the sort of glossy black finish in here as well. The seats are very comfortable and feels very sporty. 
in front of us there though when it comes to the tech is where I get excited because we have a 10 inch instrumental uh, instrument cluster here which shows you all the important information that you need but we have this big display here which is just around 15 inch display which can also rotate and all that jazz but we'll go through that in more, in more detail. Uh, below that we have two wireless charging area so if you have compat compatible devices you can stick those there and then below that we have this nice gear shifter I think it looks very snazzy as well and you get you get a couple of buttons here one for uh, mode changing so you can go from uh, sports to standard and the snow mode as well and eco mode got a start stop button there just all the buttons that you need to control the car and get the car moving and stuff like that they're all there very easily reachable as well underneath here you can see this big gap here and what's good about this is what as well as being able to store things here you also have your charging ports here which i can't really see after like kind of come down here we have a USB-A port, um, USB-C port, and there's also a micro SD card slot, which I'm not sure what that would be for, but that's there. And then over here, there's a big NFC logo here. That's because, again, you can tap your card to get the car started and so on. Two cup holders there, one in the uh, door uh, cabin as well. And then in here, there's another big space, which is big enough to fit half of my arm in there which is good so space is not an issue here at all there's plenty of space in here but uh yeah let's go through this because this is where all the magic happens so this is that big display that i was talking about and there's a lot of information on here at first but uh let's uh let's just go home so it's simpler so here you get your big widget so you can see what you know easily you can see spotify is installed on there already you've got navigation this is based on android operating system but one thing before we start is you can rotate this display as well so you can have it in portrait mode and it works seamlessly so you can just press that button there you can see it just goes all the way like that although now what happens is your phone is now you get a bit of struggle to get in and out get your phone in and out of the charging area but that's no problem because once you've got your phone there you shouldn't be touching uh, your phones anyway you can also control that on the steering so there's also a button there which you can press so you don't if you don't want to reach out like that you can also do exactly just that this supports android auto apple carplay as well both just wired not wirelessly uh, unfortunately and you can also split the screen as well so a bit like your smartphone where you can have two apps running side by side so here we can have spotify there and here i can perhaps through put the uh, navigation to be running and you can adjust how much portion of the screen they take up as well so you can sort of do that which is really nice and then press that to come out of that completely and then one thing i also love is you can see what apps are running in the background so almost like multitasking on your smartphone again if that's something that you do you'd be used to this straight away but this is very responsive there's no problems there at all i mean it looks really good and then you've got your climate control here which you can use to control different things but one thing to point out with the climate control is if i just go into climate control here as well as being able to change like the fan temperature stuff like that which by the way heated seats is by standard but you also get air purification so you can sort of clear out you know all those air that might be uh you know that might affect your allergies and stuff like that so you can sort of check what's going on you can also see outside the level of the pm25 there so that's really good and that's just a standard thing to have in the car so like i was saying you get a lot of tech in here uh, for your money and then if we go into car we can see all different settings that you can do as well, stuff like audio settings, so you can change the level of uh, how dynamic the sound would be, the level of bass and stuff like that. You can also customize it to make it your own. But one thing I want to talk about here is the ADAS uh, technology. So you have a lot of intelligent stuff here, like safety equipment here. So you've got intelligent cruise control, uh, you've got driver assist here, which you can control things like lane support system, and you can see all this that's available by standard. A standard. You've got active safety system as well. Look at all this. So there's a lot of stuff here that you can get just by buying this as standard, which is really good. Carrying on, what we also have is vehicle image, which is basically a camera, a 360 degree camera of the car. So you can have a look at different angle cameras all around the car. But what you can also do is have the 3D view of the car, which is quite responsive as well. Look at that. So you can have that see everything. So when you need to park your car and stuff like that, you'd be able to just press it and see exactly where you are so you can park safely without crashing it and stuff like that, So, which is uh, really good. So as you can see, it's very responsive. It has all it takes to, to be a really good system as well. Uh, in fact, there's also uh, voice control, which can practically control anything in the car. So you can say stuff like, hi, BYD, rotate display. Okay, rotating the screen. It just works really well. You can use that to also control things like the ambient color in the car, uh, the windows, you can use the one on the window and stuff like that. So that's really good as well to keep you focused on the road. 
If I have any qualms with this, it will be that, let me just rotate that back first. It will be that once you start using Apple CarPlay, it takes over the complete, the whole display. So now when you need to, so for example, if you go to Google Maps, now when I need to control the uh, climate control in the car, I won't be able to do that. The only way I'll be able to do that is coming out of this completely, going all the way back to BYD, and then the whole thing happens. Alternatively though, to circumvent that, it would be using that voice command again. So you can then say stuff like, hi BYD, Turn on the heat. Okay, setting AC mode to heating. There we go. So then it goes back to um, the, the, the Apple CarPlay stuff afterwards, which is good. So that's the way around it, but otherwise, really good. In front of us as well for the driver, we have the instrument cluster, which is around 10 inch of a display uh, real estate there. We can change the display view as well. So you can have different things showing on the screen. So you can have a simple view, you can have classic, etc. You can change it. You can have uh, your temperature stuff, climate control. You can see the vehicle information, sat nav, and all that kind of stuff. If you take it on the track, you can even have a look at your timer when you take it on the track as well. But all in all, it's very sharp, very visible, and it's just really nice. We also have head-up display as well, which you guys wouldn't be able to see here, but that's nice and sharp as well and in a good uh, line of sight. All right, so I guess you're asking now, how does it feel to drive this? On the road the byd seal and uh, what better place to try this out i'm actually in the all-wheel drive version right now i've also driven the rear-wheel drive only version uh, on the road already so i can actually compare and see how they feel in comparison uh, as well whilst we go on this on this drive but yeah what a better place to take this on the drive than this beautiful countryside roads of um cumbria so things look amazing here it looks very nice and clear and it's just nice to drive out here i should come here more often but anyway i digress so some stats out of the way, so you do get the rear wheel uh, drive version and you also get the all wheel drive version, so two motos, uh, 160 and 230 I think, uh, so you get around 530 PS uh, in total there. But um, the 0 to 62 figures are different as well, so depending on which one you get, if you get the rear wheel drive version you're looking at uh, under 6 seconds and then if you get this all wheel drive version uh, it's a lot faster, so you're looking at uh, 0 to 60 figures under, I think it's around 3.8 seconds, but I actually managed to get 3.7 seconds uh, with launch control obviously uh, on the track because there is a track here which uh, we've tried uh, driving on today which is fantastic, just puts everything into perspective in terms of what to expect if you pick the all-wheel drive or if you pick the rear-wheel drive now. So we did take the all-wheel drive on track though, not the rear-wheel drive. When it comes to the range, it just depends on which version you go for. So if you were to go for the rear-wheel drive, you're looking at 354 miles on the uh, WLTP cycle. And if you go for the all-wheel drive version, you're looking at 323 miles on the WLTP cycle. But I think regardless of which one you go for, you do get DC charging, so 150 kilowatt charging. So you'd be able to charge it back up uh, regardless. And I think, the difference is actually quite marginal, so it's not like a lot of difference. So for me, as long as I'm getting around 300 miles on the WLTP, I think that's more than enough to do cross-country uh, driving. That's enough for me to say it's actually competitive when compared to what Tesla can do. So that's really good. Right now in this all-wheel drive version, we have 90% battery and it says it was to do 292 miles uh, to go. And in terms of like the past 500 miles consumption on here, it's saying about 32.2 kilowatt hour per 100 miles. So you do the maths. Top speed remains the same, 112 miles per hour. And you also get the same batteries in them as well. So 82 and a half uh, kilowatt hour battery that uh, you do get in either of them, regardless of what you go for. What's also different is the all wheel drive has better suspension system. Uh, so you do get that um, variable uh, suspension system. So which means when you drive in on a nice uh, smooth road like this, things are stiffer. And then when you get on, you know, roads, roads full of potholes and stuff like that, you do get softer dampers, which means it's a lot more comfortable. So the whole point is to balance performance with comfortability as well. You can change driving mode. So on here, we can go from standard to eco uh, to sports. Uh, sports just makes things a bit more responsive in terms of when you put your foot down on the accelerator, it just does it instantaneously. There's less lag between when you press it and what actually transpires uh, from there. So that's something to bear in mind. But I think overall, the, regardless of which one you go for, the experience is more or less similar in terms of performance and uh, comfortability, which is very important to me. So you don't lose that too much on that in that area. Obviously you get better zero to 62 figures when you get all wheel drive, uh, but that's pretty much uh, where it differs there for me a little bit. Um, for handling and road handling and stuff, the steering is nicely weighted in terms of 
uh, precision. I think it's very precise and direct, so there's no issues there. Body roll, there's not much body roll here unless you're doing some crazy speeds and crazy speeds around bends and stuff like that, so when you might feel it a little bit, but there's minimal body roll in this. Road noise is very minimal as well, which is really good. I think they've done well to minimize that. One thing that's kind of annoying to me though, that takes a bit of getting used to is the indicator is on the right side. I'm used to having it on the left side for, for, for a long period of time. So uh, when I'm indicating on roundabouts, for example, I forget and I'm turning, as I'm turning, I'm like, oh damn, <laughs> it's on this side and not that side. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Uh, the screen's nice and big. I love the head-up display. Uh, in fact, the head-up display, head display right now is very minimal so I can see the speed I'm going at. I don't want too much information on there because I also have the instrument cluster in here to see extra information like my energy consumption levels and stuff like that but yeah i think overall as a package this is really good like good level of speed good range on here and you also get a good level of and level of handling and performance as well which is really good you get that itac technology as well which is a torque vectoring in this one uh, which means it sends the right power to where it needs to be so if you get yourself uh, stuck in precarious situation like muddy area or icy situation you can put it in ice mode and also intelligently the car will do all kind of monitoring the speed of the wheels and the way they're spinning to make sure that you don't spin out so you still get a good level of traction uh, which is really good we have good level of um, uh, low center of gravity in here again helps with the handling so when cornering and stuff it feels really good and just comfortable and nice as well. You get the uh, intelligent cruise control, which is good as well. Monitors the car in front of you to keep up with their speed and also just keeps you in lane as well. Uh, I don't really use it because I find it uh, a bit tricky at times. There was one point where I was driving and it almost took me to the left. So it, fit, it thought that I was turning left, but I wasn't. So that's something that I was, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna turn that off and just rely on my ability to actually drive in a straight line or where I need to be. Uh, so yeah. But yeah, I think overall, good range, good level of uh, energy consumption. I think it does very well in that area. But I think the car itself is just a really nice package. The all-wheel drive version here, it's, uh, I think it's around 45,000 pounds or so. Don't quote me, I'll leave numbers on the screen again for that. Uh, but I think for the price that you pay, you're getting a good level of premium quality all around, both inside and outside of the car. Good level of technology package in here in terms of like heat pumps by default a standard on there. You've got this big display with Android CarPlay, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You know, there's plenty of tech in the car and plenty of safety options as well. And it's even five star NCAP uh, rating. So again, safety wise, this is very pretty much a safe car to drive around. So if you're looking at a car like this, instead of going for the Tesla Model 3, for example, this is a really, really good worthy alternative or viable option to go for and you get really good package. A lot of car for your money. But over to you, let me know what you think. This is just, uh, you know, first drive impressions uh, of the car. I think I'm enjoying it. It's really good. I really like it. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any questions, uh, in case I've missed anything, drop them there as well. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.